welcome back to my channel 5 minute economics where i teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes today's topic is the solo model of economic growth and we all know how complicated this topic is and i am no magician but i have tried my very best to put this complicated topic in a simple and understandable form for you In today's video I'll be talking about the introduction as well as the background of the topic the assumptions the whole crux of the model and its implications Also guys don't forget to subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already so yeah let's get started So coming to the introduction and the background of the solo model so the solo model is a model of long run economic growth set within the framework of new classical economics It was developed by the Nobel Prize winner Robert Solow in 1956 and it superseded the Keynesian Haradomer model. You can also say that it is an extension to the 1946 Haradomer model. I have also made up a video regarding the Haradomer model. I'll attach the link in the comment section below. So basically, the standard Solow model predicts that in the long run the economies tend to converge to the steady state equilibrium. So moving ahead I'll be discussing few assumptions of the model number 1 being that the savings equal investment the labor and capital are substitutable for each other that is they can be used in place of each other the capital depreciates at a constant rate the population grows at a constant rate there are diminishing returns to an individual output there is full employment of labor there is constant returns to scale and lastly and most importantly there is no technological progress So as I already mentioned to you in the beginning that the solo model is a highly complicated model and going in its depth is really difficult but trust me if you understand this particular diagram you have kind of cracked the solo model so let me just get your attention over here we notice this diagram okay here we have on the x axis the capital per worker that is k upon n and on the y axis we have the output per worker that is y upon n okay Now I'll be explaining to you the three curves. I have made them in different colors so that you don't get confused. Firstly, I'll be talking about the blue curve, which is the depreciation curve. Here we see it is a straight line and it is like a forty-five degree line. Okay, so depreciation propo is proportional to the amount of capital. That is what the straight line is showing. It means with the increase in capital, depreciation also increases. Think logically for a second. Isn't that true? When the capital will increase, depreciation is bounding to increase. That's right. So that is why we have this blue line. Moving ahead to the red line, which is our production function. Here I've labeled it also like that. Y is equal to S K. Here we see output per worker is increasing at a diminishing rate as capital is increasing due to the law of diminishing returns. So obviously, from the shape of the curve you can very well make out that it is increasing but because it is bending downwards we can clearly see that it is increasing at a diminishing rate so it basically means with the increase in capital per worker we get increase in output per worker isn't that obvious think again when the capital per worker is increasing the output per worker is definitely going to increase and that is why we have this red line thirdly moving to the green line which is you know our investment line so we know that uh, investment we multiply by savings okay that is why i have written i is equal to s star so what we save is spent on investment isn't that obvious whatever we have you know as savings only that we invest so these are basically the three lines now coming ahead to over here gather your attention over here we see initially the investment is greater than depreciation at this point now see the blue and the green line specifically we notice at this point we can clearly see you i label it as one the green line is above the blue line it means that there is more investment than depreciation and when there is more investment than the depreciation it means the capital is growing isn't it obvious think logically it's very much simple in the next phase which is this phase if we take number 2 i'll put it as this line when the blue line is above the green line at this point the depreciation is greater than the investment that is our capital whatever you know our machinery the wear and tear is more than the actual investment and hence our capital shrinks at this point okay have you understood this now we see the economy tends to move towards the ss that is the steady state okay 
we see the economy is moving from here and from here ultimately only to us you know for us to reach this ss point which is the steady state at steady state the investment is equal to depreciation isn't it obvious because these two curves have intersected and at this point all the investment is used to maintain the depreciation and thus we have the steady state of capital and corresponding to it above we have the steady state of output on the red line so basically an economy will always end up at the steady state and steady state is the key to understanding the solo model so this is basically the crux so you can say the fundamentals of the solo model so lastly coming to the implications of this model so it states that there is no growth in the long term if countries have same population growth depreciation and savings rate then they will have conditional convergence what i just explained along this convergence path a poor country will always grow faster than a rich country the reason why after the world war 2 germany grew faster than us and lastly countries having different saving rates will have different steady states and will not converge so this is all about the solo model guys i hope this video was useful for you please do like this video and subscribe to my channel and i hope to see you in the next video pretty soon